This is the Ink Pray Love podcast. We talk all things health, wealth, and community connection. Let's go. Welcome to this episode of the Ink Pray Love podcast. I have a very special treat for you today. One of my good buddies, longtime friend, Ryan Kennedy. He's a board certified clinical nutritionist. That is a mouthful to say. He's also a functional med- medicine practitioner, even more of a mouthful to say. He's the shit. That's all I can say about this guy is today we're going to teach you how to be healthy as fuck. Ryan, thank you so much for coming today. Oh, thank good, you for man. driving up from San Diego to see me here in LA. It's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you. It's a true testament of how much I love you, Aaron, because I do not like LA. <laughs> so, make the drive from San Diego says a lot. That, that really does. That means a lot to me. Yeah. Last time I saw you was in Bali yeah. a few years ago in which you, you stayed at our house for a little while. Yep. It was awesome to have you there. And you helped me be healthier. When you're around, I'm just a healthier human. <laughs> so I appreciate that very much. And I wanted everybody today to be able to listen in and be healthier as from uh, as as a process of osmosis of hearing your sexy boy scout voice <laughs> <laughs> just like really like that that the knowledge that you have in the health game is so holistic it's not um it's not the ordinary that we hear in the mainstream media it's very much so geared for actual health and i'd love for the audience to hear a little bit about your story and then let's walk them through how to be healthier healthy as fuck as we're going to call it in this episode as a result of listening to this podcast today love it dude so my backstory, I really got into natural health from a pain to purpose journey where in 2008, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And at the time, dude, I didn't really know like the extent of what that meant. I was a young guy. It's just like, well, I guess it's just bad luck. And I'm sure the doctors are going to know what to do and everything's going to be chill. And I remember like yesterday, her oncologist telling her what you eat doesn't matter. No herbs or vitamins or supplements are going to help you. No natural therapies are gonna be effective. Your only option is to take these chemotherapy drugs and hope for the best. And unfortunately, as you know, Erin, she passed away two years later in 2010, Mm -hmm. in large part due to the misinformation she received, not just with the treatment options, man, but the misinformation she received for decades leading up to that point of why she got sick in the first place with shitty food guide pyramid recommendations and government guidelines telling you to swap out butter for margarine and all these things we look back on, we're like, how the fuck were they telling people this? It's such awful backwards advice, but my mom was just trying to do her best. You know, she was just hearing what she heard and this was a lot of which was pre-internet, you know, so it wasn't like you could go online and do as much of your own research as you can today. Mm -hmm. And so that really was a wake up call for me where I'm like, dude, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And it was a, I love, it, it makes me think of a proverb I love, which is, Someone with their health has a thousand dreams. Someone without it has just one. Mm -hmm. And it's true, without your health, dude, like nothing else matters. When my mom was sick, she wasn't worried about her career or her bank account or buying a new car or any of the stuff that we like obsess over in our day to day. She just wanted to survive. And so at the time, I was doing a little too much drinking and partying as young teenage guys do. And it was like, I started to look around and just realize like, man, I need to get my shit together because one, I don't want to die young. And two, I want to feel and perform as good as I can while, I, while I'm in this human experience going through this journey. And so I studied kinesiology in my undergrad. And I was really big into the fitness, pers- uh, you know, a lot of the physical therapy type stuff. And I realized real quick as I was working in a physical therapy clinic, the physical stuff is awesome. But if you're not dialing in your nutrition, replacing nutrient deficiencies, managing stress, optimizing your sleep, really taking a more holistic lens at all these different categories, all these different pillars of health, the physical stuff will only take you so far. And so that's when I went back to school, studied naturopathic and functional medicine in post-grad school. Uh, And that brings me to where we are today, where I run a full-time practice, consult with patients from all walks of life all over the globe, and, uh, you know, really feel fortunate and blessed. I'm able to do what I love and help people in a way that's really aligned with my philosophies and my belief systems. Uh, and you know, one thing that this whole process taught me, and I actually heard this from a mentor is, you know, we're all trying to figure out like our path, like what, what's our purpose in this world? Like it's one of the basic human questions that we all ask, like, dude, what the fuck should I do? (laughs) You know? (laughs) And one of the things I heard from this mentor 
that this was as I was far along in my journey, but it really resonated with me and I think people would benefit from it is think back to it as you're trying to figure out your purpose, think back to a time in your life where you were really struggling. Like it was a really challenging time. For me, it was, you know, the passing of my mom. But for other people, it might be a divorce or bankruptcy or any number of other things. Getting hit by a truck. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's not that easy. For example. <laughs> yeah. And think back to that moment. Who was it in your life that you needed at that time? Mm. What coach, what mentor, what practitioner, what, what therapist, who in that moment would have been the, the, the guy or gal who would have just helped put all these pieces together for you? and help guide you on your journey and overcome those challenges and now become that person for other people. Mm. And I think that's a really good frame to look at this from of like trying to identify what's my role here on this planet? Like what should I be doing with my time? And I know for me it really was a catalyst to you know start this journey and kind of get to where I am today. Mm, I love that. That's massive and it just shows a testament to who you are to then yeah, heal yourself, to go heal others and to be the person that you needed back then. I really love that. And I was, you know, I've heard that from one of my teachers was you know, the medicine, the, the trauma that you've been through or the hardship or the pain that you've been through is your medicine then, to then serve mm -hmm. after healing it. And, and I really love that. And I've seen, you know, in, in what you do also is you're coaching a lot of entrepreneurs on how to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people listening are trying to live a, a big life. You know, they're trying to do lots of things, whether they're an entrepreneur or they're just a spiritual seeker or they're just trying to live a healthier, bigger, more productive life. How do we do that at our, as our fullest, at our fullest? And also it feels like, and I know you're going to testify to this as well, the system doesn't really feel like it's like built to make us healthy. Like the world right now, us living today, walking out the door, trying to be a normal person, it's not designed for us to be healthy and vibrant and intelligent yeah. as we can be. There seems like there's lots of factors in it that are lowering our testosterone, that are just dumbing us down. The mass media, everything that's there is just like, be dumb, fucking shut the fuck up, eat, eat your McDonald's, pay your taxes, watch American Idol, drink your Coca-Cola, and just, just shut up, sheep. Yep. <laughs> and I'm just like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be vibrant and intelligent yeah. and productive. Yeah. And I, I, I want to be healthy and I want to eat proper meat and not yeah. these, you know, lab designed, you know. Beyond crap, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, why is the system designed this way and how do we beat it trying to be productive humans today? Yeah, well, when you think of why the system's designed that way, you got to understand Health makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't make a lot of dollars. Mm. And a healthy person isn't any type of you know, revenue driver for these big pharmaceutical companies and these big conglomerates that run the medical system. And to your point, the food system and the entertainment industry and all these other facets of our society. So it really is in your hands to be healthy because otherwise the way the system is designed is wait until you're sick and something catastrophic happens and then go get help mm. and then just hope for the best and hope that whatever yeah. they prescribe is gonna you know, help you recover. Which more often than not, it's designed to manage your symptoms and manage your condition, not actually cure it. Yeah. Because then they'd be losing a reoccurring revenue source. So, and, and I wanna be clear on something, dude. I love modern medicine. And you could attest to this. I've been in some dirt Save bike crashes. <laughs> yeah, I've been in some incidences, like I love to mountain bike, I love to do shit where I get banged up from time to time. And I've had surgeries and I've been able to get fixed up and stitched up and dude, that's incredible. And to your point, like it saved your life too. So when it comes to like acute trauma care and certain acute scenarios, dude, modern medicine is the shit. I love it. I love the fact that we could go get amazing surgeries by these skilled surgeons yeah. and have access to these technologies. Fuck yeah, here's a metal yeah. rod to put in your leg. I'm yeah. like, thanks metal rod <laughs> yeah. and people putting it in my leg, I'm like, yeah. great. Yeah, after awesome. the incident, you weren't calling me and being like, Ryan, what herbs should I take <laughs> yeah. to, to like, you know, my, right. my leg is right now. There's a bone sticking out of my shin, Ryan. Uh, will ashwagandha help? <laughs> it's like, nah. Yeah, yeah. So like, there is an absolute need for like yep. trauma surgeons yep. for like the, the actual, that, that's, <laughs> 100% a blessing that yep. we've scientifically grown that far. But then there's the shadow aspect of it is like, I mean, I saw on Instagram like last week that by 2025, half the world's population will be obese or overweight. And I'm yep. like, how the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, how? Like, how does that make sense? It's wild. It's wild. That blows me away. Yeah. I don't know how accurate that would be. <laughs> no, the, I'm pretty sure it's accurate. Fucking how? Yeah. But, but, but also... How? In the sense, like, how did that we get that to happen? And it's just mm -hmm. a source of, like, gluttony. And the system is provide for instant 
instant noodles, like, you know, fast food, and just, just pumping it out to be profitable and tasty. And I remember, because you taught me this when we did uh, that Yogi Lab um, uh, retreat. That's right. And that was amazing. I learned so much from you that time, and it stuck with me, and it actually did. It changed my eating habits of actually, hey, you going out into restaurants is designed to be savory. These snack foods are, des- snack foods are designed to make you want more, mm-hmm. and they're not satiating. They're designed to make you thirsty. Uh, I want you to tell touch on that for a little bit first because that was extremely interesting for me. Yeah, I mean, all these food scientists that work for these big companies are literally manipulating ingredients and flavor profiles and chemicals to trigger to your brain to eat more. And that does set people up for failure, unfortunately. And the other thing that's fucked up, Aaron, is all the healthy, like organic, non-GMO, high-quality whole foods are way more expensive than the processed crap. Yeah. And so for people that don't have the either the knowledge of the difference or they don't have the priorities in line of saying hey this is a good investment in my health and my quality of life and my my overall wellness let me spend a few extra bucks and get higher quality ingredients they just don't do that and so they end up buying what's cheap and tastes good Mm -hmm. and i can't blame them for it like it makes sense yeah and so i think that's what's really getting us in a lot of trouble as a society where even as of today upwards of 70 percent of people are overweight or obese as far as adults in America. Yeah. I mean, dude, that's three quarters of the population. Ridiculous. It's insane, man. And it's unfortunate because a lot of these people mean well. Like, they don't want to be overweight. They don't want to be obese. They want to be healthy and fit and just like everyone. But they're misled, similar to like my mom's story, with these horrible recommendations of just like eat less and do more cardio and like, yeah. oh, you're not running enough on the treadmill. And yeah. these terrible avenues that are like, no, that's probably the worst form of exercise you could do for fat loss. And by eating these hyper palatable processed foods, the reason it's really hard to eat less and really hard to get your nutrition in line is because they're literally altering your neurochemistry to crave more sugar and to crave more crap. So that's what you mean by hyper palatable, mm-hmm. that they taste so fucking good, I bet you can't eat just one. Yeah. <laughs> God, Genius those, slogan. Those motherfuckers. Very accurate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Like that blows me away. That's so designed. And so when I look at that, now knowing that, when I look at Lay's, I'm like, you motherfuckers. Yeah. Like you did it on purpose. But also respect. Yeah. That's a serious, can't, good, that's a good ass business. Can't model. knock the hustle. You know, but you know, at the same time, when the hustle's killing people, yeah. it's like, yeah, that's, that's not cool. It, it blows me away. I, yeah. I think that part was super interesting for me that, hey, the, the system's rigged. Yeah. It's meant to make you fat. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. And when have we ever in the human, you know, history of the human race have access to stuffed crust pizza within 20 <laughs> minutes of just tapping a computer yeah. in our hands and yeah. be like, stuffed crust pizza just to hear so yeah. I can just stay on my couch. Like, that's amazing. It, it is. It is amazing, but it also just sets the stage for abuse. <laughs> yeah. You know? Whereas before, you and me would have to go get our spears and go kill some yeah. shit. <laughs> that's hard work to go kill some shit. And we're not killing any stuffed crust pizza. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> There's not a stuffed crust pizza range. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the mountain of stuffed crust pizza is treacherous. Yeah. yeah. It's not a thing. We'd have to kill a bison, yep. or the bison would fuck us up. It's yeah. like, that's... <laughs> That's real. So yeah. that blows me away. So we're like, the system's a bit rigged for us to not be healthy. Yeah. And then emotionally, I feel like in the attention economy of Instagram, of social media, of all that, we're comparing ourselves mm-hmm. and that fucks with our mental health. And then we emotionally eat because we feel not enough. And I feel like the attention economy is then helping, um, sorry, hurting us to actually feel stable and emotionally okay. And then it's so much easier to eat our emotions. And the thing that I want to circle that to is gut brain health. And actually that if we're eating properly, our emotional health is, is actually connected to that. You taught me that as well. So if we eat well, we can actually be more emotionally regulated as a result, right? That's exactly right, dude. Mo- the majority of our serotonin and also other feel-good neurotransmitters, like dopamine and oxytocin, they're, they're synthesized in the microbiome. So if you have these gut imbalances that are in large part caused by eating really poor foods, taking, you know, overusing antibiotics, being exposed to a bunch of chemicals in our environment, it disrupts your gut balance and that disrupts your ability to have healthy brain chemicals and the balance of your neurotransmitters, which physiologically leads to depression and anxiety and all these other things that people suffer from today mentally. And then it becomes this like horrendous self-perpetuating process where now you don't feel good and you don't have much energy. So of course you're not going to want to go to the gym or you're not going to want to exercise. And then 
you don't have any, uh, and then like to your point, you feel bad about yourself even more. So then you make poor food choices to help numb the pain mm -hmm. or you go to substances like alcohol and other drugs to help kind of cope with this turmoil that you have internally in your mental state. And then unfortunately the modern medical system prescribes a lot of you know, SSRIs and other pharmaceuticals that can help some people. I don't want to knock them as like all bad all the time. You mean There's SSRIs a time for everybody that doesn't know SSRIs? Serotonin uh, reuptake inhibitors, mm -hmm. or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. They're a class of uh, pharma, pharma drugs that are used for treating depression. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is it helps to boost your serotonin. One of our really feel good neurotransmitters associated with happiness and positivity mm -hmm. and just feeling upbeat and good. And the problem with that is long term, they can be pretty deleterious and they can have, you know, it can be really hard to get off of them once you start. And mm -hmm. again, certain situations, certain people, they could be a godsend and they could help certain instances. But most of the time, I believe many people can solve their issues with serotonin by eating healthier foods, doing some sort of exercise, which is amazing for your serotonin and your brain chemicals. Mm -hmm. We literally have these chemical signals that are released from our muscle tissue when we do any type of exercise, whether that's weightlifting, going for a walk, whatever it is, that are literally antidepressive signaling agents that go to the brain and like make us happier, yeah. literally. Like yeah. these endorphins and these different compounds that are released from exercise. And then the other thing is the sunshine, dude. Yeah. I'm a huge advocate of sensible yeah. sun exposure because that is like serotonin 101. Mm -hmm. And it also helps balance your hormones and helps with your immune system and helps with your sleep and helps with your energy. and. Helps with everything, dude. We're, yeah. we're fucking solar powered animals. I love it. And so when you understand that, and then you look at like all the information and in the mainstream medical you know, industry of, of dermatologists saying, hey, don't go outside, Aaron. You're gonna get sunburned. You're gonna get skin we're cancer. sunscreen. Well, yeah, lather on this SPF 5000 and <laughs> wear like, you know, a hat and sunglasses or else you're gonna fall away and wither and die. Uh, it's a bunch of horse shit. Yeah. And so that's unfortunate too, because people are well meaning like, I don't want to get skin cancer, mm -hmm. right? Of course I want to like listen to this and put on all the sunscreen and go outside for, you know, two minutes to walk to my car and that's about all the sunshine I get all day. Mm -hmm. And it all drives people to feeling like shit. And so it's dude, it's it sucks. But I mean this is my life's work. Yeah. Is educating people to understand what they actually should be doing and then giving them the tools and strategies and accountability and support. Yeah. To actually do it. That's amazing. And I feel like it made a big difference in my life when, when I got to meet you and I was living with AJ, mm -hmm. you know, your, your business partner for a while, uh, AJ, my homie, and um, Human Optimize on IG, shout out to AJ, our boy, and living with high performance coaches and having close high performance coaches as my friends <sighs> grew me big time. I was like, mm -hmm. oh shit, like I can be healthier. And it's a series of simple steps. Mm -hmm. It's not like a massive, like one big thing. It's actually a bunch of little things. Yep. And if you do a bunch of little things, it makes a huge difference. That's right. But the little things aren't that hard. It's just a little thing to actually do. And I really appreciated that. That was what made it stick, where it's a lot of little habits. Mm -hmm. And then when you understand the little habits are good for you, you're more likely to do them. Mm -hmm. Like I grew up, I hated broccoli. Yeah. And I was like, this is whack. Why would I eat these little trees? They just yeah. taste like, like, these are horrible, right? Yeah. And then when I grew a bit older and I'm like, broccoli is good for me. Yeah. Like, actually that's gains. Like, I will be healthier and stronger. It tasted better for me. Mm -hmm. And so then when we understand it, we're like, actually, hey, that's good for me. Psychologically, I want it more. Just like we think sunscreen's good for us. Mm -hmm. We're psychologically tricked a little bit and we're like, this is good, yeah, yeah. but really it's fucking you up. It's not good for you, right? <laughs> yeah. yep. So it's like, okay, now I really started reframing my health practice now when I'm mm. doing something, it's actually self-love. It's like, I'm taking care of myself right now. I'm spending the extra four bucks on some expensive shit. Like the, the organic eggs are $4 more. I want the omega threes though. I'm like, yeah. I don't even know what omega threes taste like, <laughs> but I fucking love omega threes. Yeah. Like I want the thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so I tricked myself, not even tricked. I just like prioritized, like what you said before, get the better shit and it's a better investment, you know? Mm listen to this podcast instead of listening to some dumb shit. It's like, well, actually, I'm prioritizing my attention into something mm -hmm. that's for me. So for me, I'm actually gaining from it. So that was a big game changer when I got to, to really get close with you was I started looking at my health practice differently and it made a difference. And that's not to say I haven't been perfect. I'd be super jacked if I was, but <laughs> I'm walking today yeah, after getting hit dude, by a truck. Which is huge. And thank you again for when I went through the accident. You were calling me. We were going through you know how to heal quicker, how to actually heal my skin. It made a difference. And mm -hmm. I started like I was on the bone broth protocols. I was on the collagen yeah. protocols. I was just like, I went for it. Yep. And within a year and a half of breaking both my legs, my pelvis, 
this, my elbow, my bladder, my Achilles. You know, I'm deadlifting yesterday, you know, 300 pounds. Like, that's incredible. Hitting bro. it. It's yeah, great. That's right? incredible. And so the healing, bo the body is so healing if we set it up for success. But I could have just fucked around on the other end of it. And it, I know for sure I wouldn't be walking today mm -hmm. if I didn't take it so seriously. But these things really work. So I really like, I thank you for that because that really shifted me. And nutrition really shifted. And before I'd feel guilty about eating meat as well. And I was like, wait, when I heard this, it's the most nutrient dense, you know, actual food we can actually eat. Mm -hmm. I honor it then. I'm not like gluttonous, like give me all the, like the fried crap. I'm just like, no, give me the nutrient dense stuff. Yeah. And I feel tapped in when I have it with the avocado, with the eggs, with the superfoods. And that really shifted how I actually work and, and feel. Um, I want people to get the information because of the why. Mm. You know, not just like eat steaks because we're jacked. It's like, no, eat it because of the bioavailability. Mm -hmm. And that's what really like worked for me. So I want people to get out of today is the why. Yeah. And um, I want them to be able to get a perfect day or a healthy as fuck way to live. Mm -hmm. So walk me through a day in the life of you being optimized. Yeah, well, I will say what you've mentioned is on point. Education mm -hmm. drives compliance. When you understand this shit, it's a lot easier to make these choices because you have that positive outlook on it opposed to just blindly following advice. So mm -hmm. that's a huge point of this whole process. And then the other thing I'll touch on before I get to the optimized day is you gotta look at what you're buying as far as food is an investment in your performance, in your health, in your body. Like you mentioned, mm -hmm. I work with most entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I was over half of the patients that I work with in my practice are entrepreneurs, business owners, investors. And the reason they invest in working with me is because they understand, hey, if I can increase my performance, that's gonna have a massive ROI. It's the most outsized returns you can have in your business is from increasing your own earning capacity, mm -hmm. from increasing your energy, increasing your foundation, you know, having better mental clarity, better sleep quality, all these things just enhance your vitality and enable you to do a lot more, be a lot more productive and perform a lot better in whatever business you're in. And so a lot of people that understand that see like, hey, I'm better off investing in my health and my wellness than I am putting money in the S&P 500 or going and buying some Ethereum, like <laughs> I should really be investing in me. Yeah. And same thing with people who work with you, like hiring a business coach, it's going to be amazing for you to accelerate that learning curve and have a lot better ROI than just buying a piece of real estate. Yeah. And you can do both, it's not either or, Totally. but really understanding that it also starts with buying higher quality ingredients, investing in things around your environment, whether that be a sauna or whether that be a home gym or whether that be some supplements or whether that be a water filtration system, I mean, you can go down the line and all these things do cost money, but when you look at it as an investment in yourself and your family, not just on how long you're gonna live. Dude, I could get hit by a bus tomorrow. I don't know what my lifespan's gonna be, but investing in your quality of life, knowing that every day I'm gonna feel fucking good mm -hmm. and I'm gonna extend that out as long as I can, and I think that's a really good way to look at this whole process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd feel sorry for the bus that hit you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, no buses are coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or well, trucks gonna, or anything like that. Clear, yeah. But if we're hard motherfuckers, if I didn't yeah. do that retreat yeah, with you, yeah. I don't know if I'd survive that yeah. that, that truck, man. Goes to show. It just goes to show bone, even... bone density. Yeah. <laughs> it's important. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, to your point, optimized yeah. day. Let's start yeah. in the morning, bro. All right. Most people, when they wake up, they basically stay in bed. They might snooze the alarm. They pull out their phone. They start scrolling on Instagram and looking at all this social media crap and basically filling their mind with a bunch of nonsense. And so that's the first thing you gotta start with is the beginning of the day. How you start the day, like the first 10 or 15 minutes is really gonna frame the entire rest of your day in terms of your energy, your mindset, all these different factors. And so I'm a big proponent of just starting in that frame of gratitude. Just starting to understand, dude, when you open your eyes in the morning, you just hit the fucking lottery. You get to live another day. Mm -hmm. That is more valuable than any amount of money. Yeah. Even if I offered you 100 mil tomorrow, but you can't wake up tomorrow, Aaron, you'd be like, no, fuck, dude. I'll go make 100 mil and wake up tomorrow. Fuck yeah. And so that is a, a really good frame shift because most of us wake up and we dread the day. Like, we got, man, I got all these things to do. I got to take care of the family. I got to answer all these emails. I got this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. But really, it's like, dude, you get to do all that shit. Yeah. It's an opportunity. And I really have adopted that frame shift and just no matter what comes at me, I'm like, I'm lucky, I'm blessed to have these, these challenges. I'm blessed to have these problems because there's a lot of people who didn't wake up today. And so when you go at it from that angle, it helps a lot. And then as far as a few foundational things, first thing in the morning, I like to keep my phone on airplane mode. Mm -hmm. Don't be reactive to the outside world. Have that time 
to do things that are going to take care of your mind and your body. And so I'm not one of these like, hey, Aaron, do these like 45 things and have this epic three hour morning routine. And you're <laughs> like, cool, right? Yeah, like, wake up sounds, at 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah. You'll be fine. It sounds cool, man. But I'm like, I got a fucking life. Yeah. And I got to, I got to do some living here. So I'm all about short, small practices that really have a big effect in the long run. And so having like a 10 to 15 minute routine that anchors you and really primes your body, primes your mind. But it's sustainable because you're not spending hours and hours a day. You're like, dude, yeah, I could do this for 10 minutes every day. And so first thing I teach people, hydration, sunlight, and mindfulness. And I like to stack them together. So hydration, we lose about a pound of water overnight while we're sleeping. So we wake up in a mild state of dehydration. So I'm all about getting that water in before you have coffee, before you drink anything else. Have some water. I like to add some minerals to it. It's like a good quality electrolyte with some potassium, some sodium, some magnesium. Because those minerals are going to amplify the hydration you get from the water. Mm. But even if you're just starting from scratch, just drink some fucking water. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the amounts vary based on the person. But I typically tell people, like, one ounce for every 10 pounds of body weight. First thing in the morning. Okay. So if you weigh 200 pounds, plan to drink 20 ounces of water in the morning Mm -hmm. to get your day going. And the second component to this is sunlight. When we get outside, when the sun is at a low solar angle, it is spectacular for our mind and bodies. And when you're inside, even if like you open up the curtains and you, you, know, the, you open up the window blinds, dude, window glass blocks a lot of these beneficial spectrums and also distorts the spectrum. Mm. So you don't get as much int- intensity of that light to trigger to your brain. Like, dude, it's daytime. Let's wake up. Let's start getting our energy systems going. And that also triggers to your brain. Like we're not hibernating anymore. And it's one of the key signals that triggers fat burning in the morning is sunlight through the eyes. So don't wear your shades, no sunglasses. Go outside, ideally when the sun is at a low solar angle, so shortly after it's risen or before it's risen. Mm -hmm. And this is an amazing signaling agent to our bodies to get the day started. Yeah, that's what I've seen a lot with ancient yogic practices is sun gazing. Yep. Like sunset, sunrise, and there's a mudra that we do, and you actually like look at the sun and it's supposed to charge you. And I I think I think you told me this as well is your eyes can actually take in the most vitamin D possible. Like in your entire system is actually through your eyes. And I'm like, wait, what? Because the blood rushing through your pupils actually gets the vitamin D in it through your eyes. And I'm like, how the fuck? But then when I actually heard about that, I'm like looking at the sun, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, so intensely. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, I like it. <laughs> I've been doing it. Sounds it. good. Like, yeah. <laughs> and just for me, yeah, I don't stare directly at the sun. Okay. You don't want to hurt your eyes. Okay, that's you why. You just got to like, like be this. outside. Even yeah. if the sun's not hitting you smack in the face, even if you're in like a patio cover or you, you know, you got some tree lines or something by you, mm-hmm. as long as you're outside, you're getting a lot of this light. Okay. And you could be outside getting your sunlight, drinking your water. And then I like to do some type of mindfulness practice. And this is all in the same, like, you know, five minute period. Mm. And for me, I like to do breath work, you know, like the energy activation breath work, yeah. like Yogi Lab guys, you guys turn me on to that. And mm. I've just been doing it for years and teaching a lot of people because that's great, like four or five minute practice that just gets you hyped up, ramps up your dopamine, you feel amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you could also do some journaling. You could also do some meditation. You can also go for a walk. You know, you can do whatever you want to just kind of have some time with your thoughts, with yourself before you start, you know, again, opening up the phone and doing all this other mm-hmm, bullshit. Mm-hmm. And I like to kind of keep about five to 10 minutes for that trio. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be out there for that long to get these benefits. And you could, you could stay out for an hour in the morning and that'd be great. But to have that minimum effective dose, five to 10 minutes is a really good sweet spot for that window. Awesome. And then after that, I call it the trifecta, I move into the next trifecta. And for me, I like to do my training. I like to uh, do a little coffee or tea, so mm-hmm. get some caffeine in my system. Yeah. And then I like to hit the sauna. Nice. That's like my jam in the morning. Yeah. It just gets me totally fired up, and then I cap it off with a cold shower. Mm-hmm. And I don't care how you're feeling when you go into that, you're going to be feeling goddamn good when you come out of it. Yeah. And so for me, like I have a home gym, so I'll roll up my garage door, so I'm outside in the light, you know, getting all that sunshine still. I'll take you know, some yerba mate is my jam, so I'll drink some yerba mate. I'll get a, a workout going. I'll typically put on an audiobook or a podcast just to start getting the brain stimulated, start yeah. learning. But to this, to your, you know, at this point, still haven't turned my phone off airplane mode. Still not looking at emails or receiving fucking texts and you know trying to tackle anything work wise. It's all just my time in the morning. And as I'm working out, listening to the audiobook, you know, the sauna's cranked up. I jump in there for a good sweat after I lift, and then I you know pop in a quick shower. 
outside. I have an outdoor cold, cold shower. And dude, that whole thing between the morning trio we talked about, the workout, the sauna, this is like less than an hour of my day total. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I don't train for more than 15 or 20 minutes usually. Wow. I'm all about fast, quick, efficient workouts. Okay. And I'm also not going like balls to the wall with intensity. You just don't need that much volume, especially if you train regularly. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, I'll get after it and train for 30 or 40 minutes. Yeah. But it's rare I train for more than 40 minutes in one workout. And most of my workouts are under 20. I can look like you and work out yeah. for 20 minutes? Yeah, you can, bro. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> most people, and dude, this is a big point to make because most people have been misled to believe if you don't you know, sweat, your, sweat out your eyeballs and yeah. you're not bleeding out of your ears because you train so fucking hard for yeah. an hour in the gym, you didn't do anything good for you. <laughs> you it's a little horseshit. Yeah, yeah, it's a little horseshit. And, yeah. and that creates such a high barrier of entry for people to be like, fuck, man, I don't yeah. want to drive to the gym get all my gym shit ready, find a parking spot, go inside, do this thing I hate for fucking 75 minutes <laughs> just to then have to drive home and get cleaned up and it's like two hours of my day. I wouldn't do that either. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to set a lower bar, a lower barrier of entry so that you can talk yourself into it no matter how you feel where you're like, yeah, I'll be done with this workout in 12 minutes, mm -hmm. 15 minutes and then I'll get a little sweat in and done deal. And so that's something that I teach a lot of my patients is like these short, I call them my MED workouts minimum effective dose yeah, yeah and and again once in a while i will get after it longer but dude that's really all you need to get well it get sounds going. like that's totally cool if you're adding in all like i said all these other small things so it's like that's you right. don't need to go nuts you yep. can just have a lot of little things that are easier when you break them down to little things yep. and then you can hit a small workout yeah so like i, I appreciate that because you made holistic health a lot easier so we got our workout in we got our morning practice in I like the, the caffeine thing. I love coffee. You know, yeah. I love coffee. And yep. so I'm really, and you know, when I wake up, now I'm in the West Coast, when I'm waking up, I got a lot of Bali messages. So my mm. Bali businesses are on and popping and I need to like get on my phone to action stuff while they're still at the end of the day. That's been hard for me. Yeah. So I've been up and then I get ideas while I work out. This is where I fuck myself over and my workouts are like an hour where they could be shorter because I'm getting ideas while I'm working out and they always come when I'm working out yeah. and I'll half action stuff in between sets. And then yep. a one minute or 30 second rest becomes like a three minute, four minute rest because I'm typing some shit out. And I'm like, oh, I always do this. And that's like the thing I need. Like that's my my one thing. If I could shift, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna promise you after this. That's very inspiring for me. Is airplane mode your phone when I work out? Yep. And dude, just save it for 20, yep. 30 minutes later. Yeah. I tackle all that stuff in the sauna. Yeah. That's a perfect time because you're perfect. just sitting there sweating. Yeah. You can answer any WhatsApp messages. You can dive into any urgent emails. Mm -hmm. You can use your phone because you're just chilling, getting that deep sweat in. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you could do something like journaling or stretching in the sauna. I'm gonna sweat all better. over my shit, bro. I'm yeah. gonna do that. <laughs> but but definitely yeah. is, I need to segment my attention better yeah. because it's prioritized that if I can get the biscuit, just go for it for 20 minutes and get yeah. a good efficient workout in. I can then action it later in the sauna. That's right. That, that's like, that's perfect. I really enjoy that. I want to note that one in. So we got our workout in. Now where are we at in the day? Yeah, so take a quick shower. Then that's when I dive into business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, depending on the person, some people do best doing a little more fasting. So the workout, I like people to do fasted. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few exceptions to that. You know, certain women tend to do better with some protein or carbs pre-workout. But I typically just get after it. Mm -hmm. And I'll typically have a smoothie uh, at some point post-workout. So I typically wrap this whole thing up pretty early because I'm an early riser. Yeah. So 6, 6, 30, 7, sometime in there at the latest, I'm done with this whole process. Mm -hmm. And I'll whip up a smoothie. And I'm a big fan of smoothies because you can put a bunch of good shit in the blender, put it in like a hydro flask type water bottle, and I'll sip it over the course of like two hours. Mm. So you're getting this slow bleed of nutrition so it doesn't overwhelm your gut. You feel tip top mentally and physically because you're not diverting a bunch of energy towards digestion mm. like you would if you had like bacon and eggs and avocado those are fine foods but they require a lot more digestive capacity and energy to break down these heavy fats and protein so mm. i like to keep it light because the one of the reasons people love intermittent fasting is because of your energy is great you're like hyped up on caffeine and cortisol and you're just like <laughs> going strong yeah. and you're like as soon as i eat like I down them. Yeah, yeah. I don't I'm, feel as good. I feel great when I beer bong coffees, yeah. but then <laughs> after the fact, I'm fucked when I yeah. eat my five steaks. Yeah, exactly. Okay, don't do that. No, so so I like I like a light smoothie, so I'll throw some frozen berries, I'll throw some raw carrots, some peeled cucumber. People think that you should be putting kale and spinach in your smoothie. That's a bunch of horse shit. 
Those are actually not health foods in my book. No fucking way. Yeah, fuck the kale and spinach. Ma it makes, first of all, it makes your smoothie taste like ass. <laughs> which it's like, all. you're not gonna wanna drink it after that. Fair. Secondly, leafy, like dark leafy greens like that, especially raw, are really high in a compound called oxalic acid. And ox oxalic acid, or what's called oxalates, can be really problematic for inflammation. And it's not everyone, but from my clinical experience, over half of people do better without these foods. Hmm. And even if you can metabolize oxalates and you're doing okay with your kale, spinach, you know, smoothies, they're not as much of a superfood as people are sold, as far as the vitamins and minerals and actual mm. nutritional content you get from that. And so I just don't fuck with it. Mm. I'd rather throw in some, some raw carrots that are easier on your digestive system that, in my opinion, have more benefits than some raw spinach. Oh. And uh, the other thing I really like is peeled cucumber because it tastes fantastic. It's really yeah. refreshing, really hydrating. Uh, so those are my go-to, like plant foods for the smoothie. Wow. Yeah. I love that you make fitness taste better. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll throw in like some protein powder, you know, whether that's some collagen or some grass-fed whey or a plant protein, mm -hmm. you know, lots of options. Liquify with some coconut milk. Uh, and then I put in like a bunch of other little, like a little alchemist with my Oh, I've seen, stack. I've seen your supplement <laughs> yeah, stack. It's yeah, yeah. godly. I so, love it. So I'll throw in like little creatine monohydrates and, you know, some cinnamon. I'll throw in some lecithin granules, little, uh, you know, vitamin mineral complex, like mm -hmm. a bunch of little things into mm -hmm. there. It's a more of like a bonus. But yeah. You don't need to do that if you're just starting from scratch. How much of that is like, because I like, I like having the supplement stack. Yeah. And I think part of it's also just like mentally, I like having this shit and I'm like, yeah. I'm going to be healthy now. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just like triggers it for me, like the yep. placebo effect maybe, yep. Yep. but also having it is obviously great. So yeah, I like, appreciate that. And, and so then we get the, we get the drink in. What's yep. next? Yeah. So then I dive into work. And so the first half of my day, I'm always working on my business. So I have two companies I run, and it's really about doing some of the back-end stuff. Mm -hmm. So with my private practice, with patient consults, I only do consultations on the second half of the day, mm -hmm. in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. It's rare I have appointments before 12 noon. And so that gives me a really good window to really focus on like the high-priority items, mm -hmm. the, the real action items I want to focus on, whether that's you know, writing some copy for email newsletters or some content, talking you know, about some projects with the team, going over some different strategies or collaborations, whatever that is that day, you know, that's what I focus on for that first half of the day. Mm -hmm. And then I will be honest, probably four of the five days per week, I go paddleboarding. I go mountain biking because <laughs> I really enjoy that shit. And I'm four not, out of the five <laughs> days of the week you're going paddleboarding and mountain biking. That's right. This is a great lifestyle. Uh, well, and I then like again, I, I do get my, my main work done in the afternoon. That's yeah. like fulfillment that I need to focus on. But that first half of the day, while I'm out on my paddleboard, I, dude, I get great ideas. Yeah. I'm brainstorming, I'm learning, I'm taking notes, I'm sending ideas. So it's not like I'm doing zero work, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's just a more enjoyable environment for me to work in. And right. I love getting out in the water. So so usually I'll spend like an hour or two on the computer. I have a little walking work desk you've seen. You know, <laughs> yes. Get, get some movement This is in. a super hack actually yeah. <laughs> for everybody that's listening that works at home. These guys yeah. had these walking treadmills. Never yeah. seen one before and living yeah. with AJ and you coming yeah. through. These walking treadmills are boss and you just stay at home and you're walking while you're working. That's it. And I was taking coaching calls on them and I oh, really love great. them. I really love them. Now living in an apartment in Vancouver is not really a lot of space <laughs> for that fucking thing. But yeah. I really like it and it's such a great way to be like moving. So this is yep. where the constant movement all day that's aspect it. that came in and I know you're gonna drop that in next mm -hmm. I love that to get up and stretch and move yeah. and move my body and I just realized how much just negative emotions are actually stored in not moving and how that was actually just like making me feel like just just tight like yeah. just just stationary and stagnant and just kind of depressed totally. so the more I actually got up and moved around I was like oh I'm unlocking positive shit yep. uh, what, what's behind that well tons of things dude to your point I really think motion is one of the best ways to gain momentum. And as we're as our bodies are in motion, we have an increase in blood flow to the brain. Mm -hmm. And this increases what's called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So think of it like fertilizer for your neurons. Mm -hmm. So you just have better cognitive function, better focus, better executive function, better word recall. We just think better when we're not sitting on our ass staring at a screen. Mm -hmm. And so I really enjoy it. You know, I think everyone has some degree of ADHD or ADD where it's like, dude, humans are not designed to focus on one thing in a stationary position all fucking day. Mm -hmm. And for some people it's way worse and they need, you know, some medications or some therapies.
for other people, it may be manageable, but it's still like I have trouble focusing on things for hours on end. I can barely read a menu <laughs> at a fucking restaurant. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Ugh." laughs> yeah. So these yeah. types of these types of hacks and tricks yeah. really help you to set the the odds in your favor. Yeah. Really stack the chips on your on your side of the table where your focus is going to be significantly better by doing something this simple. And then the obvious benefit is the metabolic health benefits by keeping the body in motion and getting all those steps throughout the day. You're burning calories, you're increasing metabolism, you're increasing blood flow, and all sorts of other benefits that I think people would really benefit from because most people that mean well, they work out in the morning, but then they sit on their ass all day. Mm -hmm. And it almost negates the benefits of working out in the morning because, but I shouldn't say negates because you still get a lot of benefits. Mm -hmm. And working out in the morning and then sitting all day is better than not working out and sitting all day. Fair. But the thing I'm getting at is we burn most of our energy expenditure from what's called NEAT, non-exercise activity and thermogenesis, which is just basically walking around, fidgeting, Mm -hmm. movement throughout the day accounts for a larger percentage than that 30 or 45 minute CrossFit session you did in the morning. Mm. That's great, important for building muscle and bone density and all sorts of other benefits. I'm not saying don't train, but I've had patients that hated training. I'm like, hey, if we could just get you moving throughout the day, start doing some trigger sessions, just move, you know, stay more active, we can get you to your weight loss goals without having to step inside of a gym. And so for some folks, that works out better. And for everyone, it's a great adjunct to keep you mentally sharp, keep your energy up, not have that brain fog and that afternoon crash that a lot of us experience. So that's a big one. Um, And so the thing I mentioned, trigger sessions, is basically an alternative to this. If you're like, hey, Ryan, I don't want to get a standing work desk and put a treadmill and you know look like a dork on my company Zoom calls because I'm bobbing up and down. I get it. I get it. Not everyone's as much of a crazy person as I am. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is that every hour or so throughout the day, just take a break from the computer and do 20 air squats or do 10 Mm push-ups, or do some lunges or I keep, you know, a kettlebell in my office. I'll do some kettlebell swings or some pull-ups, any type of exercise. This is not a workout. This is like 30 to maybe 60 seconds worth of a body weight exercise where you just rep it out. You get that heart rate up. You get that blood flow up and then you get right back to work. It's a perfect little pattern interrupt to give your eyes and your brain a little space from the computer, do something active that's gonna engage your energy systems and get your you know, dopamine flowing and then get right back to work. Mm-hmm. And by doing those, just little bits, sprinkled in throughout your day, you know, eight, 10 times throughout the day, it's very easy. You're not gonna sweat, you're not gonna be out of breath. It actually com- you know, compounds to be more impactful than just an isolated 30 minute workout. Mm. So I'm a huge fan of that as well for people to incorporate. And again, if you work in an office and you're in a cubicle with a shirt and tie on, it's like, okay, I understand you're probably okay. doing air squats in the conference room. <laughs> no burpees in the conference rooms, <laughs> yeah. guys. All right, yeah. fair. I mean, I get it. Yeah. But for most of us, like especially now, a lot of people are working from home. A lot of people have flexibility. And even if you are in an office like, and you're doing some lunges, your coworkers are probably be like, way to fucking go, dude. Like, yeah. you're not going to talk shit because you're trying to be healthy and fit. I, I think it's way more acceptable and now, and now much more, we're allowed to do what we want to do a little bit more so now. And yeah. if people are talking shit that you're being fit, fuck those people. They're going to die soon exactly. anyways, don't worry. <laughs> those fat fucks can shut <laughs> no, up. No, they're probably no, just, That's mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, but it, to your but, point, yeah. those are people you probably don't want to associate with anyway. Exactly. And they're just externalizing their own insecurities yeah. and their own disappointment in themselves. Yeah. And by seeing you doing something active and fit and healthy, it makes them feel worse about themselves. Yep. So now they're going to try and bring you down. Yep. Their That's opinion, all it is. Their opinions don't matter. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you just absolutely need to continue this rise to being as healthy as possible. That's it. And that will be respected by the people whose opinions are matter because they're on the rise as well or want to be on the rise. So you can inspire people. If they're hating, let them hate. Watch the money pile up as 50 Cent would say. Yeah. So the, um, on that sense, so we got movement throughout the day. Yep. Um, food, lunch, meals, because you haven't eaten yet today. No, I have. I ate before I came. No, no, I meant through the day, the day we're talking about. Oh, yeah. So you had the smoothie. <laughs> the imaginary super yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you had the smoothie in the morning. So yeah. I have eaten. So yeah. I've had like a pretty epic, big-ass morning smoothie. Yeah. And then um, some days I just have that and I go till dinner. Wow. But uh, if I do have lunch, yeah. I try and keep it really low-carb. Okay. And I'm not this like, you know, keto evangelist. I, I actually really think carbs are an important part of people's nutrition. Mm-hmm. But during the day, you want to keep your blood sugar as stable as possible. And by having that like pizza or pasta or bread or crackers or cookies or any crap, you know, even if it's, uh, let's say, a decent carb like rice, 
I don't have anything against rice, mm-hmm. but it's very it's pure starch. It's going to rise your, increase your blood sugar, which is going to cause it, your pancreas to dump out a bunch of insulin. And in layman's terms, it's going to make you feel like shit. Mm. You're going to have a dip in energy. You're going to have a dip in mental focus. You're going to have mood instability. And you're just going to get that notorious carb crash that people get if you, you know, go have your stuffed crust pizza and Subway for lunch. You know, like you're not going to feel good. <laughs> yeah. And so I like to tell people just stick to protein. If you want to be fancy, protein and veggies. Mm. But like just having something as simple as a filet of fish, a steak, some ground beef. Not a fish filet, a filet of fish. <laughs> Important <laughs> differentiation. Yeah, there. yeah. Stay away from uh, Mickey D's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, that McToilet stuff's not good for anyone. <laughs> McToilet. So <laughs> what? Uh, and and I tell people to keep it simple. Like it, you could literally just get like some Greek yogurt, throw a couple berries in there, and you're done. Mm. Like and keep it light. You don't want to have this like 2,000 calorie meal for lunch because even if it's healthy foods, even if you're having a grass-fed ribeye and like mm. a sweet potato and like really good foods and an avocado, it's going to require a lot of digestive capacity. Like I was saying earlier, and when you're diverting that energy towards digestion, it's not going to your brain power. And so it's going to give you a lull after lunch. Mm-hmm. So keep it light, keep it lean, just get some protein and then really save most of your heavier foods for dinner time. Mm-hmm. That's when I'll have the ribeye. That's when I'll have some sweet potatoes. That's when I'll have some rice or any other number of carbs, some additional fruits. Maybe I'll throw in some regular potatoes or some turnips or carrots or beets or whatever. Um, I I like to reload carbs at the end of the day. And that can help facilitate better sleep quality. It can help facilitate more serotonin production. It helps with your thyroids. There's a lot of benefits to having some carbs in the dinner. In fact, I find most people that are active do better with that than a super low carb keto diet all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what lunch looks like. It's kind of hit or miss for me because a lot of times I don't really start to get like hungry, hungry Mm -hmm. until like two, two thirty. I I find a lot of people that are doing like, it's a good excuse. Um, a lot of mentally strenuous work or like if I, if I lift heavy in the morning and then I drive right into client calls or right into business stuff and I try to stack my harder shit in the earlier part of the day, what I learned from you guys, like mentally stack it. So then I earn my lunch and I'm like, okay, 12, one is my first meal of the day usually. So that would be your breakfast. And that feels good that way, but I always want to eat something big at that time because yeah. I feel like I'm almost starved for exactly. it. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that's a, dude, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's a pitfall a lot of people yeah. fall into yeah. is you're like, I'm just going to fast and I'm going to be like, oh, I'm just drinking coffee and I'm fasting. I'm doing so good with the fast. Yeah. And then you like get that to that lunchtime or that for breakfast, you know, your first meal of the day and you're like fucking ravenous yeah yeah. you just can't fill up because you're so hungry because you did all this shit and you waited way too long to eat and that's why i think the smoothie is a game changer yeah so even if you wanted to do a expedited version of that just having a protein shake Mm -hmm. something like that would be a big plus in terms of just keeping your appetite more tame by the time you get to lunch Mm. so i wouldn't you know because the other thing with fasting throughout the day like that is it is going to impact your cortisol production and then, you know, you're going to crank out more cortisol, which is our body's stress hormone, which isn't good long term. And it's also going to downregulate your testosterone mm-hmm. by having that long fast day in and day out 365. You can do it a few days a week and have some variation and yeah. you're going to be fine. But cortisol and testosterone typically work antagonistically. So if you're chronically elevating your cortisol from all this fasting and you're not giving your body any protein and any nutrition that when our body requires a lot of nutrients to synthesize hormones you won't have as good of testosterone as you would if you had something healthy at 9 or 10 a.m. versus mm-hmm. like 1 p.m. every day. Okay. So nice that's something know. that I find works well with a lot of guys, especially if you're active. If you're more yeah. sedentary, it's not as much the case. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't have as much energy demands. Yeah. Because you're just sitting on your ass all day. Yeah. But if you're active, you're doing deadlifts, you're crushing it in the gym, and then you're doing calls, you need some fucking fuel, dude. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't have to be at 6 a.m. You can still eat at 9, 30, 10, 10, 30. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that's when I'll have my smoothie. I'll bump it back, but you need something. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, that's that's actually a good point. And I like my like smoothies at pre post workout smoothie. It's like a treat. I yeah, feel like I earned it. That's nice. Yeah. Um, throughout the day, then I usually hit a big slump because I like coffee, and so like around one or two p.m., I'm gonna need my second coffee, or mm-hmm. it's like meh, like after yeah. the lunch period. So yeah. one or two is my slump, and I know a lot of people go through that. Is yeah. like they need to pick me up in the afternoon. Uh, how do you navigate that? So to your point. Uh, it's because they're eating a big lunch or poor food choices at lunch. Mm -hmm. If you ate the high protein kind of light lunch I'm talking about, Mm -hmm. your slump is going to be either significantly reduced or non-existent. So that's going to be a huge key player for a lot of people listening to this. It's Mm -hmm. just 
don't overeat for lunch and don't eat a bunch of horseshit foods and you're gonna be feeling significantly better at that one to 4 p.m. timeline you're talking about. The other thing is you can incorporate some movement in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. So maybe you do have lunch and you go for a walk outside just to kind of recharge. Maybe you do a little bit of breath work. Maybe you do one of these trigger sessions I've been talking about. You can incorporate some movement to help rebuild that energy and that momentum opposed to relying on caffeine. Now a little caffeine in the afternoons at one from time to time, it's not the end of the world. There's a lot worse things you could be doing. There's meth. It's not good for you, yeah. especially after lunch. Yeah. But, but, not with a full stomach. <laughs> not with a full stomach. Uh, empty stomach only. Yeah. But um, I found the postprandial movement. That was one thing I really took for you guys. And yep. it took me a long time to be able to pronounce that correctly. <laughs> but it was still like, like not quite there. Fuck. <laughs> How do you say it? Postprandial. Prandial? Oh, for yeah. fuck's sake. Well, maybe it's just the Canadian accent. Yeah, we'll, that's, we'll that's the way it. we say it in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. We'll uh, I'm going to stick to that story. So uh, walk us through that because that's something I really liked. And I've been explaining that to people incorrectly now, so that's quite embarrassing. Yeah, so, so you were close enough. Canadian version. Yeah, so after you've eaten, you get this rise in blood sugar I've been talking about. Well, one of the best ways to lower your blood pressure in a healthy way is to activate muscle. Muscle tissue is one of the best glucose disposal sites in the body. Mm-hmm. So by activating muscle, you're going to burn through that sugar, and you're going to normalize your blood sugar mm-hmm. really effectively. So by doing some simple movement, you don't want to go do deadlifts right after you just ate. But if you go for a walk... You're activating muscle while you're walking, any type of movement. You could do some chores around the house. You could be, you know, whatever the fuck you want to do. Like it doesn't have to be a walk, but it just some type of movement. It's going to help tremendously with stabilizing your blood sugar, improve your energy. And then it's also going to help with digestion. By staying active, it's going to help support the transit of your food through your intestinal tract. So you're going to digest your food better. You're going to have less bloating, less gas, better nutrient absorption. So you're going to get a lot of benefits there too. That was probably up there with like the top three things that I learned from you that like stuck for me that were gold. Like actually, as soon as you eat, go for a walk. Yep. And I felt so much better. My digestion's been better. Yep. And I've been saying it wrong the entire time, but I was like <laughs> telling everybody, wait, we got to go do our post pradial movement. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying it for like three fucking years, man. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really choked about that. No, no, you're but you're good, Aaron. But it's proper and yeah. it actually made me feel so much better. So that actually is like a super skill right there. Just go for a walk. Yep. I've even trained after it. You know, that's been, that's been awesome to actually just go and train uh, after maybe not super heavy deadlifts, sure. but to actually um, move and do something, even working out actually after I ate right away, if I felt digested better. Yeah, so as long as it's not too high intensity, okay, you'll be all right. Yeah, but if I don't you do throw like up. a hard workout right after you say it, it can create some indigestion because yeah. you're just like pushing it really hard. You got a full stomach. But if it's something like more isolated exercises with long rest periods, you could totally do that. Yeah, yeah. And so we're getting towards the end of the uh, well, midday. It's like three post crash, or well, now had another coffee, maybe a walk. Yeah. Um, how are we getting now down regulating? Okay, down end of the day, we're trying to yeah, like yeah. tone well, it down. I will say at that time too, when you're having a cup of coffee, what I enjoy is a couple of nootropics. Oh yeah. So I'll fluctuate at the between- end of the day. No, 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 in the early afternoon. So like that one, two o'clock timeline where I want to really be tip top for the last, call it, few hours of the workday, I'll mix around a couple of nootropics, whether that's some alpha GPC, a little nicotine gum. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of a little Kratom. Yeah, Kratom, Kratom, what's up? It's one of my favorite nootropics. Good one. Uh, And then there's a bunch of other stacks that I'll incorporate, and I like to just kind of rotate things so I'm not becoming too reliant on anything and I'm not uh, yeah. down regulating like receptor sensitivity. Yeah, yeah. I uh, found that with Kratom too. It, it could be a little addictive and in the sense of if I did too much for too many days in a row, I felt my dopamine receptors were uh, impacted from it. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, that's not an everyday thing. No. And I like having a mixed bag of things that you can kind of pick through and like exactly. do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and mix it because then I can pick what I need for a certain day. Um, why don't you drop into nootropics a little bit for everyone who doesn't know? Yeah, so it's Essentially, the, the nootropics are natural compounds that upregulate your brain capacity. That mm-hmm. just help you with your mental um, executive function and your overall um, mental power. Mm-hmm. So I, lo- I love these things. You know, they're different than smart drugs, which would be like Adderall, Ritalin, Modafinil. These are pharmaceutical, like heavy hitters yeah. that are also helpful for your brain, but not the best long term. Wait, Modafinil and Adderall were on the same like platform ish so they're different classes yep adderall is an amphetamine yeah modafinil is different but they're both pharmaceutical agents that are you know they're both drugs oh. they're neither one's natural they're both synthetic i thought modafinil was a little bit more uh 
less hardcore than Adderall. People are like crushing up and snorting Adderall. Like that's a fucking drug yeah. in that sense. Yeah. Where Daphne is also a fucking drug. Okay. <laughs> is it as intensive a stimulant as Adderall? Yeah. Probably not. Okay. Because uh, Adderall is literally like meth. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Adderall is a fucking drug. Oh, it's and great. Modafinil is like a fucking drug. Yeah, it's and I will say, like, those drugs, I don't really use them. I think there's a lot of downsides to them. Mm -hmm. But I've experimented with them in the past, and they're fucking awesome. Oh, they're like, extremely they're, strong. They do what they're designed to do very, very well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not to endorse them. No one should be taking this crap. Well, I, yeah, I just think it, it's so fucking good it's dangerous. Like, there's a lot of stuff out there yeah. that it's so fucking good it, yeah. it's dangerous. Yep. That's like one of them. Like heroin. It's yeah. like, hey, man, I bet you that feels really fucking good. <laughs> it's dangerous because it feels too good, so don't yep. do it. It's yep. like, that's too much. We've designed something a little bit too much. Like getting stuffed crust pizza <laughs> delivered to your house yeah. in 10 minutes. Yeah. That's too fucking good. It is, it is. <laughs> we shouldn't have to do that. We should have to go kill a bison. That's it. It's a lot. So, okay, we've done some nootropics. We're stacking for success for the end of the day. Yep. So um, I power through the rest of the day. Yeah. One of the most important things people can do is eat an early dinner. Mm -hmm. Eating late at night is horrible for your sleep. Yeah. It's terrible for your gut health and digestion. It's terrible for body composition. It is a recipe for fat storage because you're intaking all this fuel, all this energy via calories right before your body has almost no energy expenditure, you're fucking sleeping. Like mm -hmm. you're not burning a lot of calories at night when you're sitting on the couch watching Netflix and then laying in bed. So you shouldn't be jamming a bunch of fuel in your system. So I like to eat early. Again, mm -hmm. this is where I'm kind of weird. I usually eat dinner around 4 p.m. It's gold. It's when, best. When I learned this from you, yeah. I have never felt better having a 4 p.m. dinner. Oh my God, This was so the good. shit. Yes. It's very hard to sustain though, especially in city life that I moved back and it's like dinners, let's have dinner yeah, together. you're just too social. You yeah. gotta be like less social like me and gotta, then you could do it no problem. Yeah, it's like be a bit more introverted. <laughs> when it's no important. one ever invites you to dinner, it's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> should just stop wearing deodorant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, there's a, we'll get onto that subject too soon. But yeah, the whole thing was like, uh, because people in the West want to have dinner like at 7, 8, 9. Luckily, we're not in Latin America where oh dinner's like God, at 9 or dude, 10 p.m. I would not fare well. I would just have lunch with people. Yeah. Because yeah. they have lunch at my dinner time. Yeah. So like, I wouldn't call it dinner. Yeah. But I'd yeah. say, yeah, let's go grab lunch. Yeah, yeah, and then just I would just never go out to dinner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, and I, I sleep like a like way better, like a baby oh if gosh. I'm eating at 4. It's amazing. Um, a little bit more sustainable is like 5, 5.30 for me. Yeah. Like actually practical. Yeah. But 4 is the shit. If you it can is. eat dinner at 4 o'clock, you're a pimp. Dude, and I've had patients lose five to 10 pounds of body fat yeah. in a month, just eating an early dinner. Yeah. Not making any other changes to their fitness or nutrition or other things. Just all I said was stop eating at eight or 9 p.m., mm -hmm. start eating at four or 5 p.m., and they've lost amazing amounts of weight, improved energy, improved sleep quality, resolved digestive issues, because our bodies are not designed to eat late at night. Yeah. We're designed for food during the day. That's when our gut microbiome is most primed for food. That's when our hormones and our insulin sensitivity is the best. Mm -hmm. So it's it really is a, a big unlock for people. But again, some people work till five or six. Yeah, it's just not feasible yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah. Because they got to drive home and they want to eat with their family, which I get. Fair. So I just tell people do the best you can. Yeah. If eating at six or six thirty is the best you can do, great. It's better than eight thirty or nine. Yeah. So eat as early as you can is really the advice I give people. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, for me, I'll actually do some work after dinner. So it's not like my work day ends there per se. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll have a few calls that I'll take on the walking work desk where I'll just be walking after dinner, that postprandial movement, <laughs> and I'll have three or four console Brand calls uh, after that. <laughs> and it'll it'll be great. On um, And it works for me. Some people eat and they're like, that's kind of an end cap for their day. They don't want to have to do any work after they yeah. eat. Well, maybe they're eating something ridiculous at that that's point. Then, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. you're starving because you didn't get home enough in time. You know, yeah. which brings me to snacking. What's your deal on snacking throughout the day so we're not starving for food? Yeah, yeah. So, so if you're getting healthy snacks, I don't have anything inherently against it. Mm -hmm. You know, and healthy snacks would include like grass-fed jerky and meat sticks, high-quality protein bars. You can also bring in like some. I don't know, canned fish, or I'm I'm another weirdo like sardines. So I'll get down on <laughs> they're some super good for you. I didn't like them super either good. until you told me they're good for me, and I'm like, this is fucking smells horrible. I'm like canes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nutrition, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is good for me. Yeah. But then now I eat them, and I'm like, this is good for me, and I, yeah. I like actually enjoy what it's gonna do for me mm -hmm. more so than the taste of it. So I'm like, yeah. that that's a good switch. Like that's that, a good switch. That mental switch meant a lot for me to actually be like, this is good for me. Do it. And I think that's Enjoy a good that. point to bring up is that you don't have to always eat for pleasure. Mm -hmm. There's a time and place. I love good food. No, and no. I get down unapologetically and indulge on some good fucking food. Mm. Not all of which is always super, super healthy. Mm -hmm. But I don't do that three meals a day every day. I eat for fuel during mm -hmm. the day mm -hmm. over pleasure. And yeah, my smoothies taste pretty damn good. And yeah, if I have some lunch, 
some leftover meat or whatever, it tastes pretty damn good. But I'm not optimizing for mouth pleasure during the day. I'm optimizing for how it's going to make me feel. Mm -hmm. At dinner, that's a little different. That's where I will want, you know, yeah. maybe two, three nights a Sorry, week. Sorry, mouth optimize. pleasure is a fucking funny thing to say, bro. <laughs> that's Op all it is, dude. Optimizing for mouth pleasure sounds like a... Uh, <laughs> No, I'm just gonna stop. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> it's all honestly what it is. Yeah, yeah. And and it sounds like my dating life in the twenties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, go I'm on. sure it was. Yeah, <laughs> lots of mouth pleasure. Okay, <laughs> that's horrible. Go on. Well, ultimately, I think the earlier you can eat dinner, the best. Going for a walk after dinner, great. That all helps prepare you for a good night of sleep and get you in a place where you're kind of winding down the evenings. And then, as far as actually winding down and relaxing. Dude, I'm, I'm a big fan of some of these practices, but I also don't have too much of a structured evening routine anymore. Mm -hmm. There was a time and place where I'm like, yeah, I got to do my journaling. Yeah. And then I got to do my, my stretching. And then I got to do like my deep nasal breathing. And then I got my, my, my pin cushion with, <laughs> you lay on like this acupressure mat. And then I, I was like, you know, all this shit. That so I, excessive. Yeah, There's so much shit. So excessive. Yeah. And now I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to like maybe do one of those things. Yeah. And then you know, watch some TV with Ashley yeah. and like enjoy a good movie or a good TV show yeah. and, and then go to bed, Yeah, you know? So that's kind of my jam right now. I, I've really found that to be a little bit more forgiving for me where there's like a, 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 a tool belt of things I can do. There's yeah. lots of different things I like yep. and then I'm gonna fit at least one of them in. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, my morning, I, I wanna hit my meditation. There's breath work, there's gym, there's like, there's a lot of things. There's chanting, there's, there's, there's a walk, there's sun gazing, there's all this stuff. And I'm like, hit a few. Yeah. Like, do your best. Do, do a few of them. And then throughout the day, okay, if you have one meal that's out, because I, I work a lot, I'm out, so it's like one meal out. But even that, try to make that one good. Yep. Um, and then I'm just like, I'm trying to like do my best where it's like there's lots of options, at least like multiple choice a bunch of them, you know? <laughs> like, get, get a few of them in. Mm -hmm. And that's a little easier for me. But then the fact that you get to know there's lots of options. So mm -hmm. that's what makes it a little bit easier to actually be healthy as fuck is, hey, there's lots of things you can do. Here's yeah. your checklist of shit you can do. Yeah. And then it's kind of like bingo. You know, like how many can you get in for the day? Can you mm -hmm. bingo your day that you, you knocked off enough that you had a good day, then done, you won your day. Yeah, and it's not even always trying to jam as much as humanly possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's really about finding what resonates and really works for you. Mm -hmm. And at different mm -hmm. times in your life, that might be different. And mm -hmm. so that's where it also helps to work with a practitioner. Mm -hmm. They could basically say, dude, based on all my clinical experience, these two things are going to be the highest priority for you, Aaron. And yeah, you have this choice of 10 other things you could choose and you can mix a few more in from time to time, but these are your non-negotiables. Yeah. Like doing these two or three things in the morning, that's going to be money for you. Great. And giving you that kind of guidance and direction so you're not lost in this sea of options and this sea of, you know, God, now everyone on Instagram is doing cold plunges. I guess I have to do fucking cold plunge. You know, <laughs> you know fucking how much work it is to get yeah. ice in an apartment. <laughs> like, it's a bitch, man. <laughs> so, so there's a lot yeah. of like virtue signaling and like, I'm healthier than you are and I'm yeah. more biohacked than you are. <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah. it's like, dude, do it. Just start where you're at, yeah. make a few positive changes, and then next week, make a couple more. And then the week after that, make another one. And over the course of a few months, you're going to be well ahead of 99.9% .9 of the population. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to be doing pretty damn good for yourself. Yeah. So don't try and change everything overnight. Yeah. I really like to bring these changes incrementally when I work with someone in my practice. It's like, dude, we're going to start with the low hanging fruit. One or two things. That's it. And, and sometimes they're like hungry for more. They're like, no, 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 right. I got this. Like I want to start changing my nutrition and exercising and doing the morning routine, and just tell me all the supplements to buy, yeah. and I want to do this. Oh, and Vitamin that, C enemas. Yeah, yeah, and that ozone, what? that sleep. You're just you know? making this up now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, slow your roll. Yeah. I've been doing this a long time. We're gonna make a few changes this week, yeah. and next week we're gonna make more, and so on and so forth, and so that it's gonna be done in a way that's much more sustainable. Yeah. You're not gonna get burned out, because just like you can get burned out on work and business, yeah. you can get burned out on health practices. Yeah, yeah. So you want to do it in a way that's gonna be sustainable so you can follow through with this, for the next 60, 70 years, yeah. not for the next you know, 60 or 70 days. Do you find that this method of slowly adding them in and then it actually sets in, it becomes like what you do? It becomes a true habit. Yeah, yeah, and you just, and then you actually feel the actual benefits of it. Like when you go balls in on anything, it's just like, it never lands in its long term as fast. Yep. Kind of like you rush into, the, into a relationship and it's just like, super duper honeymoon stage and you're like i'm so healthy like the, you know first two months and you're just like eh, i'm over this shit you yep, just want to do something yep. else you gotta like slow burn and get to know your physical practice exactly. get to know your health practice and set it in and build a build a foundation and also, and also don't be like too judgmental on yourself or too rigid where yeah. you're like 
fuck, man, I missed my breath work. Like, my whole day's ruined. Yeah. Like, dude, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. to understand there's some flexibility. And it doesn't mean there's an excuse to just skip your shit on a regular basis. But mm -hmm. at the same token, like, life happens. Yeah. And sometimes you might have not have the workout you wanted. Maybe you won't have time to get this in with your, you know, meditation or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean the rest of the day shot. Yeah. You can still do other things that day and still could be a great day. So a lot of times we have in our minds, like anything in our world only has whatever meaning we give it. And by giving something power over you, mm -hmm. like if I don't do this anti-anxiety routine, I'm gonna have a fucking panic attack. It's like, yeah, you probably will because you have that <laughs> mindset. But if you just say like, you know what? Fuck anxiety. I'm, I might have it sometimes, I might not, but I'm not gonna like have this obsession over it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that can free people from being so overly like obsessed with these different practices and having this the whole concept around this called orthorexia and it's an unhealthy obsession around health wow and people yeah. I, dude i've experienced it on different levels throughout my journey getting into this stuff and i've witnessed other people go through this where it's like just chill out a little bit mm -hmm. and now, I will say it's very rare. Most people have the other op, you know, the whole other end of the spectrum where they're just don't fuck, give a fuck, fuck and they're it. super unhealthy yeah, and they're not doing yeah, anything yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. They, they need a little orthorexia yeah, in their Double life. stuff, cross yeah. and meth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. So, so yeah, but, but ultimately, yeah. man, that's, that's where I, I think a lot of people get caught up is like they read books like The Miracle Morning and they have all these practices and then they mm -hmm. go down these personal development rabbit holes and they're following all these influencers that are telling them this and this and yeah. this and this. And they just get overwhelmed. Well, then you see everybody on online super jacked, and that's all you see, right? And it's just like, that's fucking overwhelming that everyone's in such amazing Dude, shape. And what's crazy is if you go out in public, like to an airport, oh. everyone's fucking obese. And People are fat and and ugly yeah. on the regular, man. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's just. Like commonplace dude if you need like yeah. an ego stroke yeah go out to the go midwest out. go just, outside yeah <laughs> just go outside you'll feel better totally it's not like, so bad. don't compare yourself yeah. to all these instagram models yeah. like yeah. just look no. around you and understand like you're you're doing okay yeah and you could we could always be doing better and yeah. i like yeah. to strive for excellence mm -hmm. but at the same time like don't get this comparison anxiety and it's like, the worst just go outside and you see everyone else yeah. is normal everyone yeah. else is dealing with their own shit yep. there's so many other people that are struggling to get to the gym and do their spin class like yep. it's just like a commonplace it is but if you did make it to the spin class and you did go you're better off than like you said 99.9% .9 of the people aren't doing it yep. so just getting after the biscuit and getting up and doing it you're already winning life you're Absolutely. already doing a great thing and I think that takes a lot of the pressure off that we don't congratulate ourselves enough mm -hmm. and then the next level of congratulation is consistency yeah yeah you did it one time great doesn't need to be an Instagram story about it, but I do post when I go because I'm like, <laughs> but it holds me accountable. I'm like, yeah. oh, I did my thing. I just want to continuously do my thing and make that a consistent thing. So it's not just like once a month, I'm like, look, I did some fitness shit. It's like, no, every damn day I'm doing something. Yep. Um, and I think that's important. That, that, that helps you keep that grounded into just what you do. Because I know now if it's not what I do, I'm off track. Mm -hmm. And I know I feel much better when I'm on track. And so that's what that retreat that we did together was so powerful for me because it showed me that there's a better way to live and it's not so much out of my reach at all. Mm -hmm. It's right there within my reach. It's in fact much more work to be unhealthy. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of work to be fucking unhealthy. It's way more. harder. It's way harder. It's way harder. I, without a doubt when you're yeah. like overweight and you're in chronic pain and you don't have any energy, like that's fucking hard. Yeah. If you think like working out and eating well is hard, like it's hard to feel like shit all the time. Definitely. That makes everything else hard. I, I, and as someone who's, you know, struggled with mental health issues, it's fucking depressing. It sucks to be unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And if you're already, you know, mentally um, at effect, that's gonna make it 10 times worse, 100 mm -hmm. times worse. Yeah. But just getting up and, and, and training in the morning, I'm a better human. I just know I'm yeah. gonna be sharper and I'm gonna do better and I'm much more motivated and I'm gonna make decisions from a more centered place and that I'm gonna be able to be available for people and available for chaos, because yeah. chaos will come to you, but if you haven't taken care of yourself first, how available are you to meet chaos? Mm -hmm. Chaos is gonna meet you, yeah. <laughs> fuck that. No, and it's also, to your point, it's, it's about the simple stuff, man. Coming yeah. back to the fundamentals, like people get so caught up in the sexy biohacks, like let me go buy this like, you know, hyperbaric oxygen chamber and do cryotherapy <laughs> and buy, expensive. Like, buy all these supplements and do all this shit. And, and then they complain at like, oh, I can't afford that. Oh, I can't do that. It's like, you don't need to do that. Yeah. Just go for a walk. Yeah. yeah. Move your body. Don't eat terrible. Get some sleep. 
and maybe have like a small mindfulness practice, like yeah. meditate for five minutes a day. Yeah. That is a great start that if people adopted that, they'd have 90% of the improvement they're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, if you wanna get that added 10%, you might need to go up level in a few of these areas, but you don't need to do all this crazy shit. Well, what I love about that is get the five minutes of mindfulness in, but once you do the five, you're likely gonna wanna do more because you consistently you'll start seeing the benefits. Yep. It'll suck you in. And that's why like the practice is like, it started off, I couldn't do five minutes of meditation and then I could do five. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I wanna do 10. And then it was like, I'm gonna try for 20. And then that day I did 20, I'm like, I can do 20. And it was amazing. Now I'm at a place where sometimes I do five, sometimes I do 20, or now I'm like, or I've done you know, a bunch of 10 day Vipassanas, about 10 of those, yeah, and I'm like, it's, it's another planet. Yeah. Now I'm like, I wanna do a darkness retreat. That's mm. like calling me right now, where mm. I'm like, okay, three days of darkness, that's fucking terrifying, let's go. Like, yeah. And when I was, you know, when you on my journey, when it was five minutes of meditation, there's no way. I mean, like, that's nuts, you're fucked, no way. <laughs> you know, like, that's crazy. Now I'm like, that's fucked, you're nuts, let's go. Yeah. But like how that shifted from just doing a little bit, doing a little bit, do a little bit, and then we can see we can be this other person um, just because our perspectives change. Yeah. And so that's why I think the work that you're doing is so fucking important because you'll show people just by a little bit at a time that you can get a f way further along. And I think I've become directly more capable as a human from these practices because I'm able to just be stronger. And that's what got me through you know, the accident where it's mm -hmm. like I'm handicapped, but I'm like, I can heal this. I can hear from my bros, you can heal this, bone yeah. broth, buddy. Yeah. Go make your bone broth. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like yeah. learning how to make bomb bone broth. Yeah. Smashing steaks, because I'm like, I need bioavailable nutrients. That's and it. the more that I learned these things, the more that I took pride in doing them. So traveling, I know we'll get to the end of the night's sleep. We haven't gotten there yet, but the travel aspect I've loved when I learned from you guys was like, like don't tone down your practice when you travel, tone it up. So I'm like, okay, I'm finding the hotel with the gym in it. Yep. You know, as soon as we landed here in LA, I was like, we need steaks. Yeah. Like I'm gonna buy steaks for the week just mm -hmm. so I have like a steak a day-ish. So I know that that one big meal is, is gonna be a strong meal and then I won't be so hungry the rest of the day because I have healthy fats. Mm -hmm. And that's something that really shifted for me because then I, because I love sugar, bro. I love chocolate. I love yeah. fucking bro. Yeah, I'm yeah. like a sugar guy. Yeah. And the more um, actual healthy fats I had, it controlled the cravings. And so that was one thing that I think to touch on as well is how do we counteract the naughty sides of ourself? Because mm -hmm. that naughty side in me is loud. Yeah. How do I quiet it down? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the high protein, yeah. that's really what's satiating those sugar cravings more than the fats is the high protein. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge thing because protein is the most satiating macronutrient. So when you get enough protein, you're far less likely to binge and want other crap. Mm. But when it comes to sugar specifically because of its addictive nature, you're gonna have a period if you're trying to get off sugar where it's just gonna be fucking hard and you just have to accept that mm -hmm. and you gotta power through it and you gotta go, usually it's a week or two. Mm -hmm. It's rare that it lasts longer than that if you just stop eating sugar and then you lose those cravings, mm -hmm. like they vanish. You don't have this propensity to be like, God, all I can think about is sugar and going and grab some chocolate. Uh, now coming to the other side, once you're kind of like in a good place, you're looking to build some balance into your lifestyle, into your nutrition, you gotta know something about yourself. Are you a moderator? Or are you just someone that goes all fucking out? Yeah. Because for me at least, <laughs> I'm the type of person where I can't have just like one square of chocolate. I will eat the whole one. bar. Yeah, I will eat the whole bar. I know that about myself. So I recognize like yeah. I'm not the type of person that can have a small amount on a regular basis. I'm the type of person where if I have some, I'm gonna eat a lot. So I'm not gonna do it very frequently. Yeah. Because I don't want to be eating an entire like, you know, 12 pack of muffins every night. Right? <laughs> so I, I want to be like eating maybe six muffins once a week. Yeah. Instead of like 78 muffins. You eating six muffins muffins at once? <laughs> I don't usually eat muffins, period. But if this you do, they're six. <laughs> this okay. is a weird example, but. No, but I know exactly what you mean. Like, yeah. I'm not just gonna have like, I, so I was just out in, uh, in Maui and I got these um, in, unbelievable, these things, I'm surprised they're like even exist on earth. They're like as good as an orgasm. They're these like <laughs> chocolate macadamia nut caramel clusters that oh, are unbelievable. Okay. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And it comes with like, you know, single serving things like in a, like a 12 pack. 
And I'm like, yeah, if I open up that package, there's no way I'm eating one caramel. <laughs> like, I'm gonna eat at least four or five caramels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I mean. I, yeah, I actually yeah. don't really I'm like the, muffins that much. That's <laughs> <laughs> just a weird example, but I yeah. know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So I'm not like the one of those things kind of guy. Yeah. So I know now, don't buy a freaking tin of Nanaimo bars. That's Isn't right. there Nanaimo, Nanaimo bars in San Diego? I don't know. If you we don't do. know if those I've are it's a Canadian thing. Okay. They're fucking amazing. Yeah. So it's, it's like <laughs> coconut, chocolate. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah. So, um, I will have a few. And so I'm like, don't buy a box then, buy a few. And that's a great point because, yeah. so, so there are some people out there that yeah. could have just one chocolate. And if, you could, if you're one of those people and you wanna have one chocolate every fuck day. Fuck you, if you're one of those people, <laughs> fuck you. Versus being like uh, abstaining entirely, then you yeah. binge because you yeah. feel so deprived. Me. That's some of those people too. Yeah. So the biggest unlock for me, Aaron, is if it's in the house, I'm gonna eat it. So don't fucking buy it. Yeah. And I have that's a, I, I exert like, I, I harness my willpower and my discipline for when I'm buying stuff. Yeah. When I'm shopping, and I don't usually go to the grocery store, I'll just do like Instacart or Amazon delivery. Okay. But when I'm on there, I don't even think about, I just like re tap and reorder all my usual shit because I know if I order some ice cream, if I order some candy, if I order some desserts, whatever I order, I'm gonna eat it. 100%. And I'm probably gonna eat like a week's worth in like two days. Yep. So don't fucking buy it. <laughs> for real. Yeah. I, mean, I think a but, lot of people but, are the but same. But that's way. the thing, if I don't have it in the house, yeah. I don't really think about it. And yeah. I don't really like go out of my way to search for it. I definitely don't want it bad enough to like get in my truck yeah. and drive to the store and buy it and drive home. Like no fucking way. The only thing that sucks is like you go to the store and get it, you're going to Costco, you're going to get like an industrial drum of ice cream. It's yeah. a fucking yeah. thing and you're going to eat the whole thing in two days because you have an industrial drum of ice cream. It's just like the system is designed to fuck you, man. It's yeah. just like, they're, yeah. it's too delicious. It's too big, it's too available, it's too cheap. Yep. So it's like, I gotta, like, I gotta be mindful of that, like be careful. Yeah. This is why I was a bad drug dealer, because <laughs> drugs are fun and I had lots of them. It's like, yeah. it's not a good thing. I know myself now, it's like, don't buy an industrial drum of ice cream, Aaron, mm -hmm. or a tin of Nanaimo bars, because you're gonna eat them all. So just do a little bit, and like, okay, that's a good thing to remember, and like, note. And now I'm trying to snack better, I don't eat, light chocolate anymore you know I'll, I'll eat dark chocolate you know get i'll try to like snack better mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. still it's that's a challenge of mine so yeah. eating more uh healthy Protein. fats and proteins yep. that's helped my sugar cravings that's been a thing that's helped me out there that's massive uh, that one and then sleep that's been one thing that's been difficult since the accident i just actually this week got off of sleeping pills that's been great Crazy, Amazing. yeah, that was a good one. That was like, cause the sleep was important, all this metal in my body, I couldn't sleep well. And just now after all the trauma release work, I've been stopping like fidgeting in my sleep. The pain's been going down. So just this last week, okay, they actually ran out of my sleeping pills and didn't get me new ones. And I just soldiered out for a couple of days before, literally before I came here. Oh wow. So it was kind of trippy, it was a weird timing, right? And so I was like, okay, a little bit of melatonin. And I remember mm -hmm. you saying, melatonin's good for you. Like you'll yeah. be all right. Oh yeah. And I know, my, cause it was my doctor, God bless her, but it was a little bit conflicting. She was like, oh, don't take too much melatonin. Like it's not good for you. And I was like, nah, Ryan said. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if she meant like it's gonna conflict with one of your other drugs or something no, else. No, she, she was specifically saying melatonin. Me melatonin is a miracle molecule. Okay. And not only is it safe to take, there's no known lethal dose. Like you could take an entire bottle of melatonin and be totally fine. Mm -hmm. Don't recommend that. It's a waste of a bottle of melatonin. Yeah. But like, <laughs> Don't beer bong it. You're not gonna like die or overdose. And it is one of the most powerful anti-cancer molecules in the body. It really? also, yeah, it's incredibly powerful in terms of anti-cancer. And a lot of the holistic cancer clinics will prescribe high dose, like 20 to 30 milligram melatonins for the cancer patients. Wow. And it could just be, we're not entirely sure of the mechanism. It could be because it's such a powerful antioxidant at the level of the mitochondria, which is a, like the power plant of the cell. Mm -hmm. A lot of people believe cancer is a, a disease of mitochondria dysfunction, mm -hmm. where your power plant, basically your cell uh, you know, base, starts to go haywire, and that causes this massive cell replication and disrupts cell signaling and causes all this, this cellular growth. And my, uh, melatonin is really powerful at exerting these very powerful anti-cancer or anti-oxidant um, type effects. And it's really helpful for scavenging free radicals. It has a lot of benefits, man. Scavenging free radicals? Yeah, so these are what like- What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> that was an over, over complicated way of saying it's good for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah I want to scavenge you. free radicals. <laughs> what are you doing later? Yeah. Scavenging free radicals? With this melatonin. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. No, it's- um, but dude, I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big proponent of melatonin and it's not for everyone. Okay. Some people, the way you could tell if you, you kind of need melatonin or not is if you take some and you wake up the next day and you're super groggy. 
Okay. And you have a hard time getting going yeah. and you're just like, dude, I cannot like snap out of this. I'm super tired. You probably don't need it. Mm. And if you take melatonin and you feel great the next morning, you feel super rested, super restored, it's probably likely that you could benefit from that melatonin and mm. it's doing you really solid in your sleep quality. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally use like one milligram of melatonin, so I use a pretty low dose. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there that recommend high doses for more therapeutic purposes mm -hmm. and other health benefits. I'm more of a minimum effective dose type of guy yeah. when it comes to supplements in general. Like yeah. I don't really see the need to mega dose on vitamin C or other things. Not to say it's harmful, but I just don't think there's a need for it on mm -hmm. a consistent basis mm -hmm. unless you're targeting a specific outcome, like okay. a certain therapy. Uh, when it comes to melatonin though, I also will cycle it and uh, there's been a myth that people will say like your body becomes reliant on it and it's addictive. And I saw a paper a couple of years ago that was basically like, yeah, that, that's not true at all. Mm. And so I've been experimenting with this over the last couple of years where I've had patients that were using melatonin every night for like six months and we stopped it and they slept just fine. Hmm. And I've replicated the same experience myself. Like I would take melatonin, like two, three milligrams every night. And then I just wouldn't take it for months on end. I'd be totally fine. Okay. So I don't think it has an, um, physically addictive properties, but Maybe mentally it could be yeah. addictive yeah. where you feel like, ah, oh, shit, I need my melatonin. I'm not going to be able to sleep. And then you mind fuck yourself where you're ruminating on this whole melatonin bullshit as your head hits the pillow and you're like, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight because I didn't take my melatonin. And that's where it can become mentally addictive. How are you blocking that? Because I've been there before. I know exactly that. I just yeah. remind myself that it's not addictive and I don't fucking need it. Okay. You know, like <laughs> just straight I, up. I just straight up realized like, yeah. uh, who am I kidding? I don't need this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think I just like logic my way out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So I think that helps people by understanding like there is science to show like yeah. you're not addicted to melatonin. Yeah. You just mentally need to accept that. Yeah. And then go get some sleep. My thing that really helps me is like meditating at night, like in bed, because I'll fall asleep so quick. Like meditation yeah. practice at night for me is like, like I yeah, just yeah. like, I can't sleep. I can't meditate well in the evening. Uh -huh. I will want to fall asleep. It's uh -huh. like very quick. So now I just use it for my advantage now. I'm like, oh, can't sleep? Meditate. Because I know I can't. So yeah. I'm just going to pass I out. do that with reading physical books as yeah, well. Yeah. Like yeah, my yeah. eyes going oh, across the page of a book. Page. Yeah. I can't get through more than a page or two. And what I'm is up out. with our attention span these days? Like <laughs> half a page. And I'm like, I don't even know what I read. I'm just like, <laughs> Like sleep on my book yeah it's just like that's just how it is these days so i'm you know what you and aj got me into i'm, I'm listening to books and that's become part of my practice now oh, it's like just audiobooks. listening audiobooks are the shit audible what do you listen at i mean aj's on like three yeah. and i'm like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm like yeah. well, how do you even understand what they're saying well, you like, gotta incrementally increase yeah yeah I, I, you know what you're right i should i think i'm on 1.2 and i've been on 1.2 oh, for a long bro, time oh dude, I, just felt, rookie numbers. I just felt the judgment right there i just felt the judgment in my reading speed i just, I'm just got, giving you shit because i know i know you can i know you can understand you, faster you're right that. you're right so you're right i should it, i just got reading with, speed shamed with podcasts and books one of the biggest hacks i learned is don't listen at 1.0 okay like, one like normal speed is so slow motion for the way that our brain processes information. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you listen to an audiobook as you read a physical book yep. at the same time, and it was at 1.2x, you would be reading so goddamn slow, mm. you would be like, I, of course I can't retain this information, my mind is wandering because yeah. it's not an engaging enough for the speed at which I process information. Okay. And that's why speed reading actually increases your retention mm. and your comprehension of the information. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, Engaged. I've had this happen to me for years and years throughout like high school and college where I'd read something and be like, I don't know what the fuck I just read the last two pages. Totally. And it's because I was reading too slow. Uh. And as you increase your speed, your mind doesn't wander and you don't like daydream while you're reading because it's actually needing to focus on what you're reading because it's coming in at a Son fast enough bitch. pace. So it's a game changer for learning, bro. This is great. And with the audio especially, you want to increase it incrementally. So like every couple weeks, yeah. just go up 0.1. Yeah. And I've done this and I've listened at like two and a half X effortlessly. It Isn't just sounds nice. normal. And it sounds nuts when you just go from 1.0 to two and a half. Yeah. But what sounds nuts to me is listening at normal speed. Yeah. It sounds like it's in slow motion, dude. It's painful. I can't do it. This is great. I love this. And, and so as you increase that, uh, I just... Point one every few weeks or once a month. It's not a race to like get to the you know a mm -hmm. high speed, but you'll find dude, you'll be listening at 2.0, 2.2, and it'll just sound not only normal to you, but you're gonna be so much more engaged with the information. You're gonna remember it better. You're gonna actually be able to apply it more because mm -hmm. it's it's like active in your brain. Wow. Yeah, I love that. That's that's gold. Actually, I'm gonna actually. There's a couple things I'm taking out of this. Personally, I'm like, okay, increase my reading speed. Ryan won't shame me about it. Make sure <laughs> my reading, my listening speed up. But yeah. no, that's gold. And 
as someone who has ADD, like I have really bad um, attention issues, um, I need to be engaged. Yep. If I'm engaged in something, I knock it out the park. I will smash it. If Same. I'm not engaged in it, I'm like, oh, yeah, and yeah, I'm just yeah, like yeah. not into it. It's like yep. it didn't happen, and that's difficult for me. So I think those are really important, and seeing that we're benefiting from the things. So uh, I really enjoy that. Now, we're into the sleep function. We got into the sleep spa, uh, space. Is there anything that you'd like to leave people with that is, you know, in the cornerstones of healthy as fuck, what else, is there anything that we missed or is there anything that you'd like to leave people with that would really cement in a, a motivation or a cornerstone in everyone can be healthy as fuck? Yeah, so people don't need more information. Hmm. You don't need more strategies. We've talked a lot about some good stuff today, but most people know what to do already. Before they even listen to this, they know they shouldn't go eat fast food and binge on Netflix and do all this other bullshit. They know they should be eating healthy and working out and everything we've talked about, people know. This is not like new information. This is not rocket science, bro. It's like very fundamental truths that they've heard a million times. But most people don't do it. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that is? They just don't. It's not, it's, it's, they're not incentivized or their validation chain or their, their prioritization chain isn't geared towards it. I think that's part of it. But a lot of people, it is their priority. Like they want to change. Mm. They want to make it a priority. Like they. They, they will answer you and be like, Aaron, like my health does matter to mm -hmm. me, but they don't do it. How come? Well, that's my life's work, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I've come to distill it on a few reasons. One is they don't have a proper blueprint. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to talk about eating healthier. It's one thing to talk about exercising. It's another thing to work with like a trainer or a coach or a practitioner that's gonna say, hey Aaron, let's look at your schedule. At 7.15 in the morning, here's where you're going to train. You're going to do these exercises, mm -hmm. this number of sets. You have like a game plan. And for your nutrition, you don't just eat, eat healthier. Here's some recipes. You're going to prep this at the beginning of the week. You're going to buy this type of food. You're going to eat this much of it. You're going to go to these restaurants. You're going to order these items. Now you have total clarity mm -hmm. of like, it's not just this vague concept of like, yeah, I want to eat whole foods and not eat a bunch of, you know, of these chocolate bars you love. <laughs> it's like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. That's step one. Step two accountability. We lie to ourselves with alarming regularity. And we say we're going to do something, we don't do it. Life goes on and we rinse and repeat that cycle day in and day out. And then our, our word to ourselves starts to mean nothing because we know like, yeah, I've lied. I've said I was going to work out tomorrow morning 40,000 times and I haven't worked out tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. So we need someone outside of ourselves that's going to hold us accountable, whether that's a friend whether that's your spouse, whether that's a coach, whether that's a practitioner, someone in your corner that you don't want to let down, that you don't want to text tomorrow and say, dude, I was a lazy fuck and I slept in, I didn't work out. You don't want to send that message more than you don't want to work out. The pain of letting this person down that's holding you accountable is greater than the pain of just doing the shit. That is a game changer for forming these new habits. You don't need it for the rest of your life. You just need it for a period of time to really make these behavior changes stick. And for most people, that's a few months, mm -hmm. sometimes longer, but ultimately like you just need it in that beginning portion to build that momentum and to really experience what it feels like to, to feel good. And then you, you're hooked. Like mm -hmm. to your point, dude, like you don't need accountability for someone saying, hey, don't eat super late night dinners, like eat earlier. Cause mm -hmm. you just know, I feel yeah. better when I do this. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need someone to be there holding your hands when you go work out. Cause you're like, dude, I'm a better human when I train in the mornings. Mm -hmm. But to get to that stage, most people need a high level of accountability. Yep. And that's a big part of my practice because that's what drives these changes. Those things actually cemented in for me after we did the retreat. And yep. us as a squad, we were all doing it. Yep. So we had a, I had a group of accountability. And you weren't just gonna be like, uh, guys, I'm not gonna work out. Yep. I'll see you, I'm gonna all sit over here. All the rest of my crew, yeah, you yeah. go train, I'm yep. gonna go chill over here. It's yep. like, no, I wanna be part of, the, part of the group. Exactly. So that accountability is extremely important and I did it enough that I saw the benefits that it's just what I wanna do now. And it doesn't yeah. work if it's just someone that you don't care about letting down. Yeah. If it's like your homie and you've told them things and you've lied to them and like you've, you've basically tried this, so like, hey, let's be workout buddies and then you don't show up and you've repeated that, yeah. they're not the person to hold you accountable. Uh -uh. Same thing if it's like your spouse or your sibling and you just know like, hey, this person's gonna love me unconditionally yeah, even if I let, yeah. <laughs> Perfect example. Don't be workout buddies with yeah. your mom. But if yeah. it's someone that like you pay and you hire or someone that you respect yeah. and you look up to and you tell them this is like, I'm committing to this. Yeah. You don't wanna fucking let them down. Yeah. And that really makes the big difference. Definitely. And then the third component to this is just having a deeper rooted why. Mm -hmm. A deeper reason beyond, like, I think it's a totally valid reason to just say like, dude, I wanna look good with my shirt off at the beach. 
and I want like to attract partners of the other sex or same sex. You know, I just want to like, I want to feel super good and confident in my own skin. Yeah. People like to virtue signal and be like, oh no, those are vanity metrics. But like, dude, at the end of the day, we all want to look good. Yeah, definitely. But having like a deeper reason outside of yourself, like I want this so that I can be the best husband and father I could be. And I could be there for my daughter to walk her down the aisle and not be all decrepit and, and dying of diseases. Or even something more short term of like, I really want to set this example for my employees and for my, my spouse to like, this is what I'm capable of. And I, I really strive for excellence in everything in my life, especially my health and fitness. Mm -hmm. And really identifying, and there's a million other examples of this, of like, what's the deeper reason for why you want to accomplish these things, why you want to improve, why you want to be the mm -hmm. healthiest, most fit person you can be. And how is that going to translate in other areas of your life? And really journal this shit out, really map it out, like where you're totally clear and then have it somewhere that you're just reminded of this every day or that this why is just staring you in the face and like your bathroom mirror or in like your refrigerator whatever that is going to remind you when times get tough and temptations come knocking like the mouth pleasure ain't worth it Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> great call back yeah, yeah. i love that bro it ain't worth it, it ain't got, worth I'm, it. I'm just anchored to this deeper reason that's far more yeah. impactful to my life than the short-term mouth pleasure. There's enough mouth pleasure. I've had enough. <laughs> it's time for some real holistic. And maybe you, you, you play an Aaron card and you go for some acaloric mouth pleasure. <laughs> you don't have to eat. There's lots of other mouth <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> Fair. Story yeah. checks out. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much, bro. I really appreciate it. That was such a, it's always so fun hanging out with you and talking to you. It made this entire podcast just fly by, even though I had the sun directly, know, directly bro, in my <laughs> eyes this entire time. I'm melted by the sun. You're getting it's, roasted. I absolutely, it was directly, but I was getting, you know, the, the vitamin D in my eyes. I remember talking to you about that. I was just getting the sunset yeah. directly into my eyes the entire time, but it was so easy because it's a great conversation. So I appreciated it. And, um, I really think everybody listening got, some deep wisdom, some deep knowledge that'll help change your lives. And um, for anybody listening, you know, everybody listening, please uh, follow Ryan. And if you need a functional medicine practitioner to change your life and hold you accountable, this is the dude. Like, this is the dude. He helped me change my life. Uh, he supported me so many times when I've just needed that real, real brotherly health support. And um, the proof is in the pudding. I'm walking today because of having people that know what the fuck they're talking about. And he's one of the Top of the top of the top, one of the elite. Thank you so much, my friend, for coming through. I, I appreciate that. It. Big love, man, Aaron. Thank man. you, man. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Ink Pray Love podcast. I hope you found it inspiring, entertaining, funny, and also feeling a little bit more present and connected to yourself. Please leave a review and like and subscribe and do all those things. I'd really appreciate that. As well as if you're feeling in a giving mood, this podcast is there for the charities that I love to support. Go to www.aaronbaya.com forward slash charity and get some of those good karma points. This podcast is brought to you by Lighthouse Studios in Bali as well as Full Reset Coaching. That is my coaching practice. And if you're looking for help in business, inner game impact, and building your legacy to be something you're proud of, your brand, your business, and how you walk the earth and who you impact, and also having the mindset and the heart set to be able to be happy handling it all. I'm here for you. Just DM me. Let's go. Peace out, homies. I'll see you on the next episode.